So you're either one of two people watching this video right now. You have either already played Miles Morales and have been wanting to know more about what happens before the game, in between the first and second game, or you're someone that has yet to play Miles Morales and wants to have a little precursor into what happens before the events of the game. And so this is going to be my official recap, story recap of Spider-Man Miles Morales Wings of Fury, the prequel novel to the game Spider-Man Miles Morales. And I do want to implore you guys hit that link below in the description there will be an amazon link to purchase this book and that's because i really do recommend this book to everyone that is interested in the character or just love miles morales as a whole and of course there's a lot more to say about the full book and a lot more to experience with the full book as opposed to this recap video so with that being said i will not be going over every single nitty bitty story beat in this entire book i will just be going over the main core story and the things that are most pertinent to the story there are other things going on around it which i will be making videos about because a lot of them are very interesting and things that i kind of wish was in the game but i digress a lot of cool stuff here that we will explore in future videos but for this one recap video we're just doing the main story the main point of spider-man miles Morales, wings of fury so what is going on guys it is your boy tkd123 here back again here on playstation source and let's do this story recap about spider-man miles Morales, wings of fury prequel novel. The story opens up with a character we heard about during the game but never got to see, Abuelita. That is Miles' Abuelita to be exact and she's helping Rio and Miles Morales move into her apartment that we end up knowing so much about in the full game. This marks the beginning of Miles trying to become better acquainted and grow into his new home, Spanish Harlem. Genki even comes by to help the moving efforts and after dinner, Genki leaves back to the dorm room him and Miles share at Brooklyn Visions Academy while Miles goes into the night to better know his new home. After a late night swing through New York, Genki sends Miles this ominous video that depicts these birds like creatures the size of humans walking in a dark alley. Beaked noses, twig sized feet, and covered in feathers, the creature is certainly far beyond a person in a costume and appears to be a literal oversized bird. The new Spider-Man takes note of this and after Genki signs off for the night, Peter joins Miles and a conversation ensues which I will, like I said before, cover in a future video as it is not pertinent to the overall main plot of the story, but man, it is a really really cool conversation that I cannot wait to tell you guys about in a future video. The next morning, Miles arrives at Brooklyn Visions Academy with Genki to start the first day of the semester of his school. Things are going as usual until a commotion starts to occur outside at the SHIELD headquarters. A gigantic pigeon is scaling the side of the building, although luckily not a real bird as it is a metal suit housing a person inside it. Miles suits up, throws himself into the action to pursue the pigeon, a nickname given the appearance of this villain. Both Miles and Pigeon meet atop the SHIELD building, and after a few good hits and witty remarks by the new Spider-Man of New York, the tables quickly begin to turn. It is then when Pigeon quickly gets the best of Miles and makes makes a mess out of the shield building along with causing multiple holes through floors, ceilings, windows, you name it. As the fight continues, Miles contemplates calling Peter as he doesn't want to be the type of hero, well, the type of Spider-Man, that has to call for backup for everything. At a certain point, the damage gets too high and he gives in to calling Peter. We find Peter Parker at the Photojournalism Gallery Gala with MJ as she's accepting an award. Miles is explaining the situation at the SHIELD building when he hears a huge crash through Peter's end of the call. Miles, Vulture is back. Peter says and jumps straight into the action on his end as well. As things heat up on Miles' end, he realizes that Pigeon is after a briefcase at S.H.I.E.L.D. and continues to fight her, or at least try to, until they both crash on the floor. And to Miles' surprise, Pigeon reveals her afro puffs of hair under her suit's hood. Pigeon is a she. Pigeon asks how many times he's thought about the cancer-stricken Vulture since he was locked away at Rikers six months ago and that if he felt bad that he let an elderly man to rot for his days. She continues explaining that they're both more similar than not with them always trying to do the right thing and being ridiculed for it. Her as Pigeon and Miles as the new Spider-Man. The new villain urges that when Miles is ready to join the right side of this whole ordeal with her grandfather to give her a call. She leaves him a business card with her number on it, leaves with the briefcase by overwhelming Miles with information, and lastly, Pigeon is the granddaughter of Vulture. Via phone call, Peter and Miles reconvene with Peter telling him that Vulture made off with some sort of artifact from the gallery and they both head off into the night losing each other's battles, but hopefully 
not the war. The next day, Miles is working at Feast and all he can think about is Pigeon. He decides to send her a text inquiring more information when a younger gentleman and his father come into Feast. Miles panics as he recognizes the younger man named Steven from an altercation earlier in the novel that once again isn't super critical to the main plot overall. However, when the two start to exchange words is when it gets really interesting as he details his mother was battling cancer when a new company called Terra Heal swooped into the picture, taking his mother with her and after a few days, she wound up dead with no explanation as to why and what they did to her. The company claims to be healing the world through a revolutionary cancer treatment, but Steven only sees a cold-blooded organization that killed his mother and he wants payback. Miles thinks to himself how he understands this pain as he felt it with the demons during the events of the first Spider-Man game, but hopes the best for Steven to not fall to these negative emotions. The two agree to disagree after the conversation, but Miles doesn't forget what Steven told him about Terra Heal and vows to look into it. And lo and behold, Miles wakes up the next morning with a Terra Heal lead given to him practically on a silver platter. He sees a live feed online of a commotion at Terra Heal headquarters involving multiple of the same human sized birds from Genki's video he sent him earlier in the story. He suits up and heads over to investigate to find multiple bird people trashing the entire headquarters. Unlucky for them, Spider Man utilizes the irrigation system at the headquarters and all of them begin to flee the entire headquarters headquarters area, however he does hear a supposed leader of the bird people calling them crows. They all scatter and flee the scene and Miles heads home. Later on back at feast, Steven and him exchange some more words, however this time Steven uses a particular phrase that Pigeon used against Miles as well during the shield headquarters fight. This tips off Miles into questioning if Steven could actually be involved with the crows and working for Pigeon and Vulture. Could it really be the case? His thoughts are cut off by Peter who can tell he has a lot going through his head at that moment. They are about to confirm plans to go get pizza to talk it all out, but Miles cancels all those plans as he gets a reply text from Pigeon when he texted her earlier on in the story. She wants to meet up. And this time, he's not about to let her get away. The new Spider-Man and Pigeon finally meet up, but after the exchange of words, nothing really comes of it. Miles asks for an explanation as to what Pigeon and Vulture are up to, but she deems Miles unworthy and not ready to know that information yet. She prompts him to call back when he's actually ready and signs off with her true name, Starling. Granddaughter of the infamous Vulture, Starling. Later on, Miles and Peter finally meet up for that pizza to talk about everything, and Miles Miles lays out everything out to Peter, that Vulture is Starling's granddaughter and that she was upset that Vulture was locked up in Riker seemingly for the rest of his days but they're cut off by a call Peter received. The call is from a police captain, no not Yuri Watanabe but another captain named Viv. Viv seems to be Peter's new NYPD contact and even refers to Miles as Spider-Man 2.0. She fills him in on some ongoing information about Vulture breaking out of Rikers, turns out while Vulture was locked up at Rikers, he agreed to a deal that not only granted him a comfortable cell in the medical wing at Rikers, but unlimited visits from family in exchange of his body being used for medical experiments due to his spinal cancer. The medical experiments were ran by none other than Terra Heal, however the treatment details were not to be disclosed to Vulture as a part of the deal. As Vulture's treatment progressed, his body grew stronger and stronger, eventually putting him into remission. At that point is when when the breakout from Rikers occurred with three winged suited people helping Vulture break out while also providing him a replica Vulture suit to escape. But Viv explains that what's an even bigger problem than Vulture leaving Rikers is the treatment itself leaving Rikers. The treatment involved quote micro technology designed to combat cancer cells. The nanobots would collect data and report it back to a central AI. As Miles ponders the ID of the other wingsuit villains as he lists the one he knows as being Vulture, Starling, and potentially Steven, Peter asks Viv if she knows what Vulture stole from the gallery. She discloses that he stole a golden statue with two wings called Thoth's Embrace, which was dug up and on loan from Wakanda. She's unsure of why Vulture stole it, but does know that they have to get the nanobots out of their hands as Vulture could damage the entire city with those nanobots. The conversation with Viv ends and just as Miles is about to tell Peter about Steven, his spotty 
intense tingles as the entire pizza place is attacked by Vulture's van along with multiple human-sized birds. The human-sized birds pursue the Spider-Man as they scurry to suit up. Miles has all but his mask on but sees Genki about to be attacked by one of the winged monsters and steps in to save him. Genki, in complete disbelief, is staring at his best friend and the new Spider-Man at the same time. A quick conversation ensues about Miles' true nature when Miles tries to stop a bird person from attacking another human. He's unsuccessful as the winged person bites the human and after a few moments starts to grow wings out of the human body. The human birds can turn normal humans into other human birds by simply biting them. That's just that's just great. That's just fantastic. One closes in on their location as Miles tells Genki to make a break for it for safety while he goes back for his mask to take the bird monster out. They break, Genki runs, Miles gets his mask and shoots a web at the monster's head and swings away. Both Miles and Peter hop on a call to discuss the situation in New York. Bird monsters are multiplying throughout the city as they bite other humans to grow their bird army, a flock if you will. Peter tells Miles he's heading for Times Square when Rio Morales calls her son. Miles lies to her ensuring he's not in harm's way from the growing flock of bird monsters and meets up with Peter to discuss a plan. They're both taken aback by Starling who is talking to two other wingsuit people about finding Spider-Man. Miles calls Dibs for a round three with Starling as Peter heads out to find Vulture. The new Spider-Man directs his attention to Starling as she approaches her next victim, his mother. Miles swoops in and saves Rio However, as they're escaping, Starling forces them down mid-web swing and bites Rio. Miles looks in horror as he watches his mother turn into one of the winged monsters. Starling and Miles exchange words as she explains that she feels righteous in her actions, allowing these people to have the ability to fly and be free just as her grandfather requested to be when he was locked up at Rikers. He tries to talk sense into Starling at the fact that affecting thousands of people's humanity for the sake of her grandfather is insane, but she calls upon her crows, where we're introduced to the previously unidentified fourth crow named Shadow, along with Hollow Claw, who Miles recognizes as Steven by his voice. He asks why they would even be doing all of this, which actually gets him an answer. Starling explains that these nanobots have Terra Heels logo all over them, and when word gets out that this monster infection sweeping New York City is at the fall of Terra Heels technology, they'll be doomed. Once the dust settles and all of the bird monsters will be let to be sought out as to what caused them to turn from human to bird monster, it will be the tiny nanobots that are transmitted through bites of a bird monster to a human, thus leaving the blame to be at Terra Heel's fault. At that point, Starling will have payback for the painful experiments that they did on Vulture along with Steven's payback for the death of his mother. Miles tries to let them see reason and even gets a hesitation from Steven, but Starling pushes the rest of the crows to get in line and finish the job. As they're leaving, Miles sees Peter fighting Vulture near a rooftop. Starling and Miles come to them, ending with all four of them and the rest of New York realizing that there are really two two Spider-Men instead of one. A fight breaks out which ends with Vulture explaining his true motivations for all the mayhem, that he wants Terry Hill to pay for the treatment he had to endure. Although it treated his cancer and made him stronger, the process was painful and they kept him locked up in a cage, thus the main reasoning for him taking the nailbots and changing them to morph humans into bird monsters to pin it all on Terra Heel. However, he further discloses that the nanobots will keep the humans alive for as long as they're needed and will end up killing the bodies they inhabit, which is something he had not told his crows, let alone his granddaughter Starling. Starling, extremely distraught, takes leap of faith off the building and leaves. Just as Miles is about to pursue her, Genki calls him and assures him he has a plan to stop all of this, the bird monsters and everything. Taking the bait, Miles takes the chance and rushes to Genki while he also asks Peter to try and contain the situation on the ground as he meets up with Genki to figure this all out. Genki and Miles meet up and Genki reveals that after he shot the first bird monster they encountered in the face, he briefly turned back into a human. 
although he was bitten again and became a bird monster one more time. So Genki took a sample of Miles' web and deducts that something about the web could be making the effects of the nanobots reverse. He analyzed the sample of Miles' web and realizes it's antiseptic. The web also has a bit of Miles' blood on it from the blast at the pizza shop. Couple all of this with Genki laying out that most nanobots exhibiting reactions to ethanol based antiseptics, Miles' spider blood mixed with his antiseptic webbing caused the nanobots to malfunction and stop their effects. Both teens brainstorm how they can mass fix the situation in the city without having Miles' blood on his webbing and going around webbing every monster he sees. He's only one person and that would virtually be impossible to pull off. That's when Miles remembers that the nanobots communicate to a data center with one central AI, one central source. If he can use his webbing and DNA to affect that central source, maybe all the nanobots will stop as well. Miles spits on his webbing, tested it on a monster outside to confirm the technique, and sets off to save New York. He heads towards the building he saw Starling and the other crows head into in hopes of finding the central source of the nanobots. A fight breaks out among Starling, Miles and the other crows with Miles getting the upper hand on Steven and Shadow along with getting them to say just enough information for them to confirm that the nanobots are connected to a central source. During the fight, Starling escapes but that's no matter as Miles explores the building to not only find a glowing canister full of nanobots but Starling herself. At this point, Starling is doubling down on the plan in spite of feeling betrayed by her grandfather at what would happen to the people after they tore down the Terry Heel company. This allows Miles to get through to her to enlist her in stopping the bird monsters from taking over the city. She starts by explaining that the glowing canister is Romidium, a substance the statue at the gallery that Vulture stole was made of. She explains that the Romidium puts the nanobots into overdrive, allowing it to go beyond the healing capabilities and fuse with bird DNA so when spread, turns the host into bird-like creatures. Only problem is that destroying the container would kill only the nanobots and not fix the humans themselves. So that's when Miles comes up with his plan. He theorizes that filling the container with his web DNA, the nanobots will adapt and learn the properties of his DNA rather than the bird's DNA that Vulture put in. Thus, he'd release the nailbots from the container into the air, which will hopefully override the old nailbots and turn everyone back to a human. Starling is at first hesitant at the idea, making sure he's aware that when opened and tampered with, the canister could explode as it is volatile from the Remedium. Miles rushes all that aside, remembering his mom is a bird monster in the city and has to do anything in his power to try and stop this to save his mother and save New York as a whole. He cannot give up. Eventually, Starling agrees and they begin to carry the container through the sky to Times Square. After helping Miles take the container to Times Square, Starling leaves as she fears what Vulture will do if he caught her helping Miles undermine his plan. Peter and Vulture show up as Peter praises Miles for getting Starling to assist him while Vulture doubles down on his reasoning to his plan. A fight between Peter and Vulture breaks out, which gives Miles the opening to make a web ball the size of a basketball and drop it into the canister. A giant explosion occurs, sending all of the nail bots across the city that begins to work as hoped for. The bird monsters are transforming back into humans and it's all confirmed when Ryo calls Miles and he gets to tell her he's coming home. The story ends with the city going back to normal, Genki and Miles sharing their favorite drink, Ryo ramping up her campaign, and finally, Peter letting Miles know he's proud of him, but more training had to be done of course. Miles ends with replying to Peter, saying showtime, as the story ends leading into the game Spider-Man Miles Morales seemingly taking place a few weeks after the end of the novel. So yep, that was the overall recap of Wings of Fury and while we don't have a really clear end to what happened to Vulture and what happened to Starling, I think those will all be tied up in Spider-Man 2 but overall I think the story is pretty good you know and I think that there was a little bit of mishaps with like the reasoning as to why Vulture and Starling were doing this. I feel like it kind of made sense but it was a little bit kind of iffy because I mean like you know the experiments that you know, Terry Hill did 
still cured Vulture, so he was just kind of upset that it was in a painful manner, but I digress, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is, but most importantly, I do employ everyone to go pick up the book, read it for yourself, and trust me, you want to stick around for the channel because I do have some more tidbits from the book that I will be sharing in separate videos. Those are really cool to dive into. Can't wait to do that, but before we get there, what do you think of the story? What do you think of the recap? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and make sure also while you are down there to check out our description where you can find links to our Discord our twitter as well as our anchor link that way you can listen to our long form content and podcast format those of course being road to ps5 and road to miles Morales. those are both are all said and done but fret not because more road to podcasts are in the pipeline for the future like the video if you enjoyed it as well as hit subscribe to playstation stores to keep up with the latest and greatest in playstation thank you all for watching and as always greatness awaits